So why are we here with Dax Garman? Well, I, I think uh, I think we're here because I mean this is just my opinion that, that Dax is a guy that I think has a lot of pressure put on him, and you know uh, he went to three different high schools. Now this will be his third different college, and uh, I kind of feel for him now. now if he wanted to walk up to me and say, Mr. Allen, you're wrong. You're wrong. I, I, I want to go play and I want to go start, you know, one more season of college football. I would say, Dax, you deserve that. I mean, you you put in the work and Lord knows. I mean, he, he went through as, as big an up and down campaign as probably any quarterback I've ever seen in person last year. You know, when first five games, opponents weren't, the opponents weren't as good. Nobody really knew about him, and uh, he lit it up with the long ball, which is what he does and what he does best. And then teams got to realize he wasn't as mobile. OSU's offensive line was, was you know, trying to get their sea legs. And then he had been rusty from lack of inactivity, or lack of activity, I should say, in, in, in playing, that he had trouble processing uh, – the short part of the short and medium part of Oklahoma State's passing game, and he got he got the crap beat out of him. Um, you know, personally, uh, I think the kid was courageous. I you know I think Oklahoma State fans should owe him a you know a, a thank you because of what he got that team through last year. And it, I think it'd be great since he's respected uh, to to stick around and, and enjoy another year. He wouldn't play much if at all. There's no doubt about that. Um, but you know, he'd put some roots down. This this kid doesn't have any high school or college roots. But if he wants to go search and find a place to play, then then and and that's really what he wants to do. He needs to go do it. If J. W. Walsh never got hurt, would we be here today? Uh, no, no, probably not. If J.W. Walsh never got hurt, I think what you'd have by now is uh, J.W. Walsh would be the starting quarterback. Um, you might not have him named because I think Mason was showing the progress in practice. Um, now, would he have gotten enough reps in practice last year to inspire the confidence that he, he ultimately did? Maybe not, but I think you'd let him compete in spring. Uh, but I do think he would have passed Dax. Um, I mean, Mason Rudolph is 6'5", 240 pounds now. <laughs> Rock solid, 240 pounds. That's impressive. Yeah. I mean, he's I, – I, I don't mind saying this because I said Mason Rudolph I thought was the best high school quarterback in America when OSU got him. Now, he was a well-kept secret because he didn't do Elite 11. He didn't do the Nike camps. He stayed at home and worked with his team and – and they went 16-0 and and won a state championship. And that was what was more important to him than than going and working out with the Elite 11 crew and, and so forth. But uh, I have no reservations about saying it, provided Mason Rudolph goes through what you would expect as a college experience, he'll be playing in the National Football League someday. He's that kind of quarterback. And, you know, Oklahoma State has, has seen good quarterbacks. I mean, Clint Shelf was good and – J.W. Walsh is good, and and Zach Robinson, who was in the NFL for about three or four seasons, is good. Brandon Whedon, obviously, is who I would most compare Mason to, but the difference between Brandon and Mason, uh, Brandon may have just a a little bit better zip, but but Mason's more athletic than Brandon. So, uh, you know, no, I don't think you'd be here right now. I think you'd be talking about a different – uh, dynamic at quarterback, probably with Mason trying to to uh, compete with J Dub, but I think you'd still be where you are with Dax, and I think it might even be more frustrating because Dax wouldn't have played last year. I think the fact Dax played as much as he did, had some success, unfortunately, you know, had some tough times, and and really that Texas game, you know, I have a hard time ever forgetting that he. I mean, he got the crap beat out of him yeah, that night. Yeah. And it was not fun to watch. It's not fun to watch a kid get beat up. Robert Allen with us on the Little Caesars Hot and Ready Hotline on 107.7 The Franchise, our OSU insider. Uh, all right, Big 12 basketball. Um, is there any sort of, you know, chatter inside Gallagher-Iba right now that, you know, you know we kind of got to win this game? 
you know, talking to to Michael Cobbins and and uh, you know uh, Phil Forte and 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 Travis Ford yesterday. Of course, they had their public faces on. No, now, uh, yeah, and and personally, I think you know, could things get really haywire with the uh, the the mid majors and the and the low majors that could cause a panic? Yeah, I think it could. That that happens. You know, not every year, but it happens a lot of years where you start looking at, you know, who the automatic qualifiers are, and and you start thinking, what about Murray State that won 25 games in a row? Are they going to get in along with Belmont? Personally, I don't think so. I think I think the committee has in their mind uh, the conferences that are one bid conferences, and and I don't think they violate that very often. Now the Valley is different where. Uh, you know, Wichita State, you know, and Northern Iowa were both going to get in. Illinois State could, you know, really screwed that up. Um, you know, that's that's a league where you'd lose a bid. But I, I think right now, I think Oklahoma State's in. I think with their RPI, and here's the other thing too, I think Texas would have to win the Big 12 tournament to surge ahead of Oklahoma State. Let's let's remember, you know, OSU swept them this season. And and they it finished with the same conference record. So uh, if you're going to get Texas in, and I know Texas is a bubble team right now. Well, that that tells me Oklahoma State's a little better than a bubble team. So could it get that way? Yeah, the short answer, yes. But but right now I don't think it is. But Travis is smart. He 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 saw the first two games with Oklahoma, and he knows the matchup is an issue. That's a bad matchup. Just the personnel. Personnel wise, uh, OU is a bad matchup for OSU. What scares you most about the matchup? Well, I think with Spangler and Thomas, the, they they create problems inside that I think Oklahoma State has a hard time handling. And when when problems are created inside, whether it's you know defensive or or offensive, you have to try and compensate. Well, when you compensate uh, offensively. You know, that that takes away from your three-point game. That's why I'm saying Nash has to have a terrific game. Cobbins has to have an inside presence. Uh, The other guys need to take some shots at driving the basketball, even if it's just to collect a foul or even if it's just to kick it back out. At least make Oklahoma respect the inside game so that Forte and and Newberry and and Hickey can get some decent looks on the three-point line because I think Oklahoma State, when they're best offensively, they're hitting on both cylinders. One is is driving to the basket, and the other is kickouts and, and half court and three point shots. Um, that's what we saw in, in their best offensive games against Baylor, against TCU, uh, once against Texas, against Kansas. That's where where no OSU is doing their best. OU is very good at keeping them from doing that. So you know, and then on the other side. Uh, if Spangler's rebounding and scoring inside, now guess who's in foul trouble? Cobbins. He gets in foul trouble against o- Oklahoma in the first five, ten minutes of a ball game pretty consistently. So he's got to be very disciplined. He he can't he can't throw the bedlam emotion out there because if he does, he's going to have three fouls and be sitting the bench the rest of the first half into the second half. And when that happens. Boy, OU really takes advantage of their of their opportunities inside, and it just gets worse. So, there, there's a lot of things that that have to work right for Oklahoma State to match up well with Oklahoma. A lot. Robert Allen with us on 107.7 The Franchise. All right, let me uh, do this really quick. Uh, kind of switch back to football before I let you go. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't want to. I don't want you to put words in Mike Gundy's mouth because that wouldn't be fair. So I'm going to ask it in a way which you don't have to do that. If you were the head coach of the Oklahoma State football program, would you use the SAE video in recruiting against Oklahoma? No, I don't think I would. And you know what? I've been contemplating, and it's very difficult for me, Zach, because people associate me with Oklahoma State, to write a, a column about this. Um, but I'm smart enough to know that, that there's racism on every campus. 
I'm smart enough to know that I'm a whole lot better than my mom and dad were as far as respecting everybody, sexual choices, racial choices, religious choices, you know, and my kids are so much better than my wife and I. And my hope is their kids will be better because that's how we that's how we improve this thing. Uh, but th- this happens on every campus, and uh, you know, it, it's is it is it bedlam? Is it competition? It is. But you know what? Uh, how long did it take for the the student newspaper at OSU to go prying around the SAE house in Stillwater and find in a window a Confederate flag, right? Which got taken down. But you know, I mean. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't think I've. I've thought about. It. I don't think I would. I, I, I tell you what. I read the story about Eric Stryker, and I mean, you know, on the field, I like to see Cowboys run over Eric Stryker and put cleat marks, you know, on his back. But in this case, I feel for Eric Stryker. I mean, you know, I, I even thought about this this morning. I was part of the first group in Dallas. Uh, and the DISD that went through desegregation. I remember going to my junior high and seeing the buses roll in from West Dallas for the first time, knowing our parents at home were scared. I remember taking two teammates, uh, Raymond Turner and Kyle Woods, to my house for the first time. And my mom was like, I can't believe this. You know, I mean, so uh, I, I just hope... Like I said, I just hope we can keep improving. Is it right? No. Uh, have we solved the issue of, of racism, of of prejudice? And, and it, No, it's still around, but it's getting better. I really believe that, and I hope it just keeps getting better with each generation. That's all we can do is strive to get better. And getting better would not necessarily be another rival school using that that video in recruiting. I don't think that'd be right. Yep. that wouldn't help. That's not going to help it. Uh, you going to Kansas City? No, I'm. Uh, I'm. Ah. I'll, no, I'll be here. Uh, spring football started this oh, week. I'll probably yeah, major. Yeah. I'll probably major in spring football this weekend or All this right. week. All right. Well, I'll be up. I'll, I'll eat enough barbecue for the both of us. Oh yeah, and I, you know what? If you need a tip on some places to go, you know, you know oh, me from looking yeah. at me. I've got a list of restaurants in Kansas City to hit. I'm ready to go, buddy. Okay. You'll be, you'll be hearing from me. Good talking okay. to you. All right, thanks. All right, buddy.